Okay, so remember a few months ago when I made a video on the most painful moments in Vikings history? Well, I thought, let's do it for every single team, so no one is going to be spared. So let's not waste any time and get straight into every single NFL team's most painful moment. But before we get into the pain, this video is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. So Underdog is a fantasy football-based app that has draft-based games such as the very popular best ball format where they offer daily and weekly competitions, as well as my personal favorite, the Pick'em Entry Style. For pick Pickums, as you'll see here, you can choose any higher or lower pick on any player. So I uh, randomly chose to go with Tom Brady and the rest of the Bucks offense. And once you complete your pick'em entry, if you use the promo code TUBFROG in the link in the description, then you will receive a match of up to $100 on your first deposit. That is pretty insane, so please take advantage of that. Also, if you win your pick'em, your winning entry can be multiplied by up to 20 times your initial entry fee. So once again, use my code in the link in the description to sign up for Underdog Fantasy and let the fun begin. So we start off with the Indianapolis Colts, and they've definitely had their fair share of pain. Their most painful game definitely comes in Super Bowl 44 when they lost to the New Orleans Saints, and famously, two very awful moments happened, including the Tracy Porter interception and the onside kick recovery. So if I I had to pick a moment between those two, I would say the Tracy Porter interception was a little bit worse, because it seriously just sealed their fate. But there was one moment that was much worse than just a simple interception to lose the Super Bowl, and that was losing their entire franchise. In the middle of the night, Baltimore Colts owner Bob Ursay decided to move the Colts from Baltimore, their longtime home, to Indianapolis without letting any of the media know. I mean, how spineless can you really be? But we move on to the next team in their division, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they're a relatively new franchise, so you'd think they wouldn't have too many painful moments, but uh, you'd be wrong. And more recently, in 2017, the Jaguars had an incredible team, going 10-6 and six, and made the AFC Championship game against the New England Patriots. And they even had a chance to win that game as Miles Jack ended up stripping Deion Lewis and could have returned this fumble for a touchdown, but it was called dead by the referees. That is heartbreaking. And although this was bad, this team wasn't absolutely unstoppable, and I think they had a better team in their franchise's history, so we're gonna go to the 1999 Jaguars. And this Jaguars team went through it all. This season, the Jaguars went 14-2, losing two games throughout the entire regular season, both of those games to the Tennessee Titans. Then they went into the playoffs with a great team, obviously, they won 14 games, and lost in the AFC Championship game by a metric to the Tennessee Titans again. This is more heartbreaking to me because one team, one singular team was the only thing that stood in your way from making and probably winning the Super Bowl. Anyways, speaking of the Tennessee Titans, they're up next. And the Titans also count as the Houston Oilers. So just to give them a little homage, let's revisit some of the worst moments in Oilers history as well. Throughout the Oilers' entire devastating history of collapses, the one that stands on top of this awful dumpster has got to be Frank Reich's comeback in the 1993 Wild Card. I already talked about this game in depth in the I watched a game from every decade video, so I'm just going to give you a brief rundown. Basically, the Oilers took a 35 to 3 lead and blew it all in almost one quarter to a backup quarterback. That is so embarrassing. They also had another horrible moment in 1979 in the AFC Championship game when Mike Renfro's catch was ruled incomplete. That one play would be the momentum turner in the entire game, and the Steelers would go on to win that game and then the Super Bowl later on. But back to the Titans organization, and I think one play stands above all of them and it's not even close. But do I even need to talk about it? Now we get to an actual team that really does not have any true heartbreaking moments. The Texans have only been around for about 20 years, and in that time they have had some bad moments, like the butt chins handling of the DeAndre Hopkins and Dwayne Brown situations, among other things, but besides that, not too much. It's kinda sad that they don't have any painful moments, cause that means they really haven't done much as a franchise, but I think the one moment that does stick out above the others is the collapse in the Chiefs game in the 2019 divisional round. Almost the same thing as the Oilers, giving up 28 points in one quarter, but the fact is they did this in the second quarter, and they really weren't supposed to win that game in the first place, so I guess you're getting off the hook in this video, Texans. The New York Giants. Well, there's really just two answers for this, and that's 
either Miracle at the Meadowlands. Yeah, there's two of them. Now don't get me wrong, the first Miracle at the Meadowlands was awful, but it was in the middle of the regular season and didn't have any direct playoff implications, unlike the second Miracle. Because this one truly cost the Giants, who were one year away from winning a Super Bowl, a playoff spot. And everything about this play was just disgusting. The Giants coach Tom Coughlin adamantly told the punter to just not kick it straight to Deshaun Jackson. Do anything but kick it to Deshaun Jackson. And he did the exact opposite. And as Deshaun Jackson fumbled the punt, then raced down the sideline, you can see Tom Coughlin slam his clipboard into the ground in frustration as the Giants would eventually miss the playoffs almost entirely because of this game. Now we move on to the Dallas Cowboys, who are also a veteran of pain. In more recent years, you got things like the Aaron Rodgers to Jared Cook play, and then the Mason Crosby field goal to end their Cinderella runs of Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott as rookies. But I do think the rabbit hole can get a little bit deeper. You keep going a little bit down the ladder, and you find the Tony Romo fumble in the wild card against the Seahawks. This one was absolutely heartbreaking in the moment, but in actuality, this Dallas Cowboys team really wasn't going anywhere, so it still can get worse, don't worry. You keep going down a little bit further, and you find things like Michael Irvin's injury, among other free agent factors, that led to the loss of the dynasty in the 90s. But still, I think one moment does trump all others for the Cowboys' pain. It's very close, don't get me wrong, but I think Bart Starr's QB scramble in the Ice Bowl is still the most heartbreaking. You can make the case that the catch is a little bit worse, but the Cowboys had a chance to drive down and win the game after the touchdown, unlike the Ice Bowl. But that Cowboys team really had a chance to rain on the entire parade of Vince Lombardi's going out party, and they came so, so close. The worst part is they actually made three stops in a row on the goal line to keep the Packers out of the end zone, and all they needed was one more and the clock would have expired giving them a win. But no, the Cowboys blew it, of course. Now, the Eagles, a franchise that has existed since the dawn of time. You'd think they'd have some awful franchise moments, but in all actuality, they really don't have that many bad ones. Now, the one that does stick out to me above the others is the 2002 season when the Eagles played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC Championship game. And this game was the last one the Eagles would ever play in Veteran Stadium, and they really wanted to show out for their fans and make the Super Bowl. And it wasn't looking great early on, as the Bucks, who were supposed to not be able to play in the cold, were flourishing under this weather while the Eagles were crumbling on the other side of the ball. And the one moment that summarized all of the Eagles' pain in one play was when Donovan McNabb and the Eagles were driving down the field, he drops back and throws an interception to Rondé Barber, who returns it for a pick six, sealing the game for the Bucks. That, that is not a good feeling for Eagles fans. But we move on to Washington, where I think it's pretty obvious. It's the death of Sean Taylor, and I don't really want to get into that, because that's just sad. But we move on to another division, and now the Pittsburgh Steelers, another team that has existed for about as long as the league has ever been alive for, and they really do not have any terrible moments. Throughout their entire history, the Steelers have either been incredibly dominant or incredibly terrible. But if I had to to pick one moment, I would probably either choose the 2004 season when they went 15-1 and and lost in the AFC Championship to Tom Brady and the Patriots, or I could go with a more recent example like the 2020 Steelers, who went 12-0 and to start the year and then went 1-4 and in the last five games to stumble into the wild card. And there, they would meet their eternal punching bag in the Cleveland Browns, who actually kicked the crap out of them, ending the game in like the first minute of the first quarter. And at the time, Steelers fans really didn't know if that was the last they would ever see of Ben Roethlisberger. So maybe in the moment that was more heartbreaking than 2004, but I'll let you be the judge of this one. For the Bengals, you got a few contenders, like the Carson Palmer injury in the 2006 playoffs versus the Steelers, which really changed their franchise trajectory as a whole. But I think there is one, or dare I say two moments that stand above the rest. And that is Joe Montana destroying your franchise twice in two Super Bowls. In 1982, Joe Montana buried the Bengals 20-0 in the first half, and they were never able to recover, winning the Super Bowl for the 49ers. So that's one strike. And then in 1989, the Bengals lost to the 49ers again, this time Joe Montana winning the game on a last-second drive. So that's a strike two. And apparently, there's no need for three strikes, because the Bengals did not make another Super Bowl until Aaron Donald wrecked them again in 2022. Moral of the story, if the Bengals ever get to a Super Bowl, someone 
someone on the other team is going to go super saying and make sure that they don't win. So the Ravens are another expansion team that is relatively new, so they don't have too many painful moments either. But in my opinion, I would probably have to give their most painful loss to their 1 in 2019 against the Titans in the divisional round. While this loss is still relatively fresh in our minds, this team in 2019 was absolutely loaded and had the best player in the NFL at the time with an MVP prime Lamar Jackson. And they ended up losing to the Titans in the divisional round. And this was not a Titans team that had proven themselves yet. Derrick Henry was still just getting his feet wet into being a star, and this was a terrible, historic loss. And the Ravens still haven't recovered from this loss to this very day. So I guess just keep trying, Lamar. For the Browns, you got two horrible moments, like the drive done by John Elway and the fumble against John Elway, but there is still one moment that's so much worse than the rest of them, and that was losing your entire team by one greedy ass mother and you're not the first team to experience this, Browns. But you could argue this moment was worse than the Colts, because the Browns moved to Baltimore where they won a championship just a few years later, and the Browns, meanwhile, got an expansion team and have not recovered since, or anything close to that. Now we move on to the next division, and we start with the 49ers, who have a lot to pick from. Now, in a 10-year span, Every single one of these moments happened to one organization. In the 2012 playoffs, the 49ers had a real chance to go to the Super Bowl and should have if it weren't for Kyle Williams, this no-name punt returner filling in for an injured Ted Ginn, fumbling two crucial punts to lose the game to the Giants. That's one punch in the gut. And then we move on to the next year where they do make the Super Bowl against the Baltimore Ravens where the power goes out and they get an extra chance of life, but they still lose as Jacoby Jones and Joe Flacco drag their meats across their face for an entire game. Then one year later from that, you get the 2013 conference championship game between the Seahawks and the 49ers. And in that game, Navarro Bowman blows out his knee and should have gotten a fumble in this play, and that didn't happen, which resulted in the Seahawks winning the game in about the most cataclysmic situation possible as Richard Sherman shuts down Crabtree, tips the ball, and the ball gets intercepted by Malcolm Smith. Then the 49ers had a few years of being unwatchable, so we move into the 2020 Super Bowl where Jimmy Garoppolo was a few inches away from throwing a touchdown to Emmanuel Sanders and winning the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. That might be the deepest punch in the gut yet. And then this last year in the 2022 NFC Championship game, they were one interception away from making and possibly winning the Super Bowl. Now, although all of that stuff is absolutely appalling, I think the worst moment in Niners history is without a doubt the 1990 NFC Championship game between the Giants and the Niners. Because in this game, the 49ers had a chance to make it to the Super Bowl and possibly three-peat, but the game ended when the 49ers fumbled, leading the Giants to a game-sealing kick. And now we move on to the Rams, who are another team just like the Bengals, who got absolutely plastered by one GOAT quarterback in particular. This time it's, uh, is Tom Brady. In the 2001 Super Bowl versus the Rams, the Patriots came in as the complete underdogs, but still won, because Tom Brady on the last drive completed multiple passes which led Adam Venateri to kick a game-winning field goal. And then again, in the 2019 Super Bowl, where the Rams made the Super Bowl off of a, um, a questionable call, they then played the Patriots and once again got Tom Brady's shoved right into their face. There's a few other contenders, but because this is a double, I think this is the worst moment in Rams history. For the Cardinals, there's also a very clear one. I mean, Carson Palmer did get injured in 2014 to stop a potential playoff run, but come on, there's one answer and one answer only. Santonio Holmes breaks the rules of gravity and defies God himself to toe-tap in an acrobatic catch to win the Super Bowl, destroying the Cinderella run of the Cardinals. We move on into the next division and the next team, the Kansas City Chiefs. One that also doesn't have too many horrible moments. If we want to take a more recent approach to things, then we can look at D. Ford in the 2019 AFC Championship game, where he gets an offsides penalty which offsets the interception that would have iced the game, taking the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. And since the Chiefs later won a Super Bowl, we know they possibly could have done it in this year, which makes it even more heartbreaking. And they did end up losing a few Super Bowls in the early years of the league, but those aren't as bad as what I'm about to tell you. The 1995 Chiefs and their history historic, tragic episode. So in the 1995 season, the Kansas City Chiefs were 13-3, and and arguably the best team in the entire league, and played against the Indianapolis Colts in the divisional round. This was a Colts team that was led by Jim Harbaugh, so 
nothing super scary. But the Chiefs completely imploded. Led by their unintentional disaster artist Marty Schottenheimer, their quarterback Steve Bono, who made a Pro Bowl that year through three interceptions, and throughout the game, their kicker Lynn Elliott missed three field goals, including a game-tying one at the end, and that was right before their wide receiver dropped a game-winning touchdown pass. Ah! Oh. If this was in the Super Bowl or the AFC Championship game or something like that, then I think the Chiefs might have a case for one of the worst meltdowns in NFL history, but because it was just the divisional round, I guess it's not that bad, Chiefs fans. And now we move on to the Chargers, where, come on, there's clearly one answer. Don't make me say his name. Marlon McCree. And I've talked about this play multiple times, but what hurts me as a Raiders fan every single time is Marty Schottenheimer going to his defense and making it very clear that if you get a game-winning interception at the end of the game, to just fall on the ball. I mean, listen to this clip. Make sure now, when you get the interception at the end of the game that wins it, you just go down on the ground and the hell with all that running around, all right? I can't help but just feel bad for Marty. Now we move on to the Broncos where, I mean, they spent two first round picks on Russell Wilson. I mean, can you imagine? No, but in all seriousness, the Broncos do have some tough moments in their history, more recently than in the past. They did have John Elway and they lost a ton of Super Bowls with him, but none of those were actually heartbreaking or even close. But in more recent years, we've seen guys like Peyton Manning be involved in some nauseating losses. In the 2012 season, their first year with Peyton Manning, the Broncos went 13-3 and and were firing on all cylinders looking to wreak havoc in the playoffs. <laughs> but, uh, unfortunately they ran into the immovable object that was prime Joe Flacco, and along with his miracle worker Jacoby Jones, the Ravens beat the Broncos on the last play of the game with a play now known as the Mile High Miracle, ending the Broncos season right there on the spot. But don't worry, it gets worse, because in the exact next year, with Peyton Manning having a full year with the Broncos, they broke almost every statistical passing record there was to break on their road to the Super Bowl. You might think this is good, right? Well, it's not. Because in that Super Bowl, on the very first play of the game, the ball goes right over Peyton Manning's head for a safety. And this was only the trigger for the rest of the onslaught that was to come. So you got heartbreak on one end and demoralization on the other. So take your pick. Now we move on to the next division, and this time the Detroit Lions. And I gotta say, it's kinda hard to have a painful moment when you don't have a hopeful moment in the first place. But if I had to pick one moment, I would probably go with two, and that was the Lions losing their two best players in franchise history, Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson, to early retirements. But you got hope now, Lions, so I guess get ready for some pain. The Green Bay Packers, another team that was forged in the fires of pain and heartbreak. You could pick out multiple heartbreaking games and moments from each decade of Packers history, and you'd have no problem with that. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna stick from the 2000s and on. And don't worry, there's a uh, a lot of content here. The Packers have had horrible losses in the playoffs, like 2003 versus the Eagles and 2022 versus the 49ers, but I think two stand alone as the worst in Packers history. And uh, there is going to be a common denominator here. The 2007 Packers were a special, special unit. So special, in fact, that they won 13 games throughout the regular season and glided straight into the NFC Championship game against the New York Giants, where they would face them at home. The Packers came into this game heavily favored against a Giants team that squeaked into the wild card and lost. They lost in Lambeau. The game would end on a Brett Favre interception, and that would be the last throw he would ever complete, I guess, as a Green Bay Packer. So that game was crushing, but there might be one worse, and that would be the 2011 Packers and their meltdown against the same exact team, the New York Giants. So if that 2007 Packers team was special, then this team was a goddamn once-in-a-generation unit, because they won 15 games throughout the regular season and had all pros and pro bowlers all over the place. This Packers team won a Super Bowl the year prior and were just destroying teams with bloodlust in their eyes. So they took all this rage and passion to repeat and went out and dropped a a stinker against the Giants in the first round. In Lambeau, it wasn't even close. It was a 20 point loss. So once again, the moral dichotomy of humiliation versus heartbreak. There's no right answer. Well, like I said before, the Vikings are the entire inspiration of this video, and I already made a full video on them, so you can go watch that if you want to. But just to give you a quick Spark Notes version, Blair Walsh, Gary Anderson, Brett Favre, and much, much, 
more. The Bears are the second oldest team in the entire NFL, and they really don't have too many awful moments either. But this is another heartbreak versus humiliation thing, because in the 1986 season, a year after winning their vaunted 1985 championship, the Bears went out in the first round. This was a Bears team that won 14 games, and because free agency really still wasn't a thing yet, they didn't lose any of their cast from last year, only defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan, so people really had high expectations for this team. Now, yes, today the Bears are just a walking tragedy, but a long four years ago, the Bears actually once had a good team. So good, in fact, that they won 12 games, but still made the wild card and had to play against Nick Foles on his last three legs. And just like the Chargers, one name is all that it takes. Cody Parkey. Next division, the Bills. Four. Super Bowl. Losses. In. A. Row. Does anything else need to be said? Now, the Patriots are a team like the Steelers that have been around for a while and were either really dominant or really bad, as we uh, can see nowadays. And the Patriots do have some old school moments like losing Derek Stingley forever with a career ending spinal injury, but there's also one answer only. 2007. What the f but this loss still baffles me to this very day. This Patriots team was loaded with everything and they lost to Eli Manning. I've covered this game like six times and it still doesn't make sense. And even Tom Brady himself said he would trade damn near every ring he had for that 2007 one, so you know how much it hurt. The Dolphins, to me, have two real answers. One being their 1982 Super Bowl loss to Washington as John Riggins on fourth and short tore all of Miami Dolphin fans' hearts out and scored a game-winning touchdown. And to rub salt in those wounds, just two years later the Dolphins once again got a little glimmer of hope making the Super Bowl only to get fisted by Joe Montana. There's uh, there's two quarterbacks in this video that have been a real theme. But another dark horse contender for Dolphins heartbreak is gotta be the 2000 divisional game against the Jaguars. Or better yet known as the crucifixion of Dan Marino. Because in the last game of his Hall of Fame legendary career, Dan Marino went out sad, losing 62-7 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You cannot get more embarrassing than that. The Jets, just like the Lions, are following the code of if you're never good, then you can never get hurt. There's moments like the legendary AJ Dewey game, taking Ken O'Brien in the draft over Dan Marino, and of course, the butt fumble, but slightly, I think one moment is just a little bit worse. The 1998 AFC Championship game against the Denver Broncos was supposed to be a chance to change the culture of the Jets forever. Under Bill Parcells, they really had a chance to prove themselves as a real organization. Things were actually looking great. The Jets were up 10 to zero in the third quarter at one point and really looked like they were gonna make the Super Bowl. No, ever since Joe Namath sold his soul, the Jets are just not allowed to make the Super Bowl. So yeah, the Broncos went on to win John Elway a Super Bowl, not Vinny Testaverde. So the Panthers are another expansion team, except they actually have a lot of bad moments. The two that stand out to me the most are Jake DeLome's meltdown in the 2006 NFC Championship game and Vaughn Miller. Just just Von Miller. I think Von Miller has the slight edge just because it was the Super Bowl and he alone almost entirely ruined the Panthers' chance at winning a Super Bowl, destroying a 15 in one year. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a weird one for this list because at one point in their franchise's history, they lost 26, 26 games in a row. They also have another moment like drafting Bo Jackson first overall, who just didn't play for them, so they just threw their first round pick in the trash. But one moment in Bucks history that really is heartbreaking is the 1999 NFC Championship game between the greatest show on turf and the Bucks core. So the structure of the Bucks team would later prove that they could win a Super Bowl, and this game they came one Ricky Pro catch away from beating the greatest show on turf. Falcons. Yep. I'm not gonna say anything, but when your franchise has a moment where your best defensive player, a family man, gets busted for prostitution the night before the Super Bowl and it's not even considered on a list like this, then you know it's bad. They lost 20. The last one, the New Orleans Saints, and boy have you had it rough in the past few years. It seems like the Minnesota Vikings have signed some blood pact that every time they play the Saints, they're able to reverse their curse and use it against the Saints. Cause that is two heartbreaking moments against the Vikings in just the last couple of years. And then you add on that one of the worst calls in officiating history so bad that it brought the Rams to the Super Bowl and created a new rule that was removed after just one year. 
That's just so unfortunate. But if you enjoyed this video, then like and comment, because it really helps the video and the algorithm a lot. And you can even subscribe if you like this video, because I got a ton more like this on the channel already. And if you like this video, then watch this video right here on the worst injuries that ended superstar careers. It's really good, trust me. Anyways, until next time.